All right. I think we're live. <laughs> I, don't, I cannot see myself. I think my camera is not working, but uh, it looks like we are live. So welcome, everyone. Uh, let me just bring up the chat. And please let me know if you can hear me and if you can see the screen at least. I don't know what's going on with my camera, but that's all right. I'm just going to turn it off for the time being. Okay. So no no overlay camera for me today um how you going Sina? zero card hey felipe how you doing man eso um danilo welcome hello from brazil awesome all right so i can only see uh youtube comments at the moment but Hopefully the the other streams are working as well. All right, so um, for so today is gonna be the last stream that I'm gonna do for December. Uh, I'm gonna take some some time off, uh, but we will, we will hopefully we'll be back uh, in, in January. So today I'm just gonna do you know one last just come up with something <laughs> on the spot. Um, I have nothing prepared, nothing specific. Um, we did something kind of like in um Christmas yeah christmas themed last time so today um i don't know maybe we can just do some some kind of creature and you know for, forget about the the christmas theme or maybe do like a creature santa claus type of thing <laughs> so um yeah so if you guys have any any questions or any any suggestions as well i'm happy to take those as well um while we get to something that could work or while we find the the actual theme, we're just gonna start building something um, using the you know I have a dynamic sphere and the move projects to start exploring some some shapes. Hi Luca, Felicia, yes, we just we just starting. All right, so again, I'm not I don't have anything in particular to to create today, so I'm just gonna start exploring some shapes and. And see what it takes me. Um, so for this type of more abstract approach, I'm gonna enable the accu curve with the move brush so that we get some more of this pointy effect, and see what we can do with this. I mean, it could be, you know, it could be anything. Uh, but yeah, it could be a Santa Claus. <laughs> it could be a Santa Claus that, or you know what, it, it could be just a creature, like an insect type of creature that just has a Santa Claus hat and that just makes it Christmassy. <laughs> so I'm starting to kind of see uh i don't know i think it's this could be maybe from this side no i think it's from this side it kind of looks like a like a head in here so let's just explore that a little bit more and maybe maybe give this a a neck so that we understand a little bit better where this thing is facing and see if that Sort of suggest something, something else, and I just redynamic so that we don't have any issues with the with the topology. All right. So it's starting to look like a humanoid creature. I'm not sure if that's what I'm. I don't know if that I like that, but we'll we'll start exploring again. This is this is kind of like one of my process of exploration. Just start pulling things, going back a bit, um, and it's gonna be you know if you don't have any any reference or, or any ideas where you're going uh, to create. So having something like this. Or, or this process at least to explore and and try to overcome that sort of creative blockage. Um, it's it's pretty enjoyable. 
maybe we can scale things a bit just to play around with the proportions. So I'm gonna use the mask lasso and scale this like so. And that sort of gives me a bit more of an idea. Ah, so as soon as you do that, you're going for that alien look. Let's try that. So I'm gonna redynamish mirror and well because I was getting some weird effect there. Um, and you know what? This this entire thing could be the head. Right? I, I created kind of like a, a neck and start exploring that, but it could easily be the entire head. And I'm trying to keep this very, very low res so that any changes that I make, it's it's gonna be very easy to, to manipulate. And when in doubt, always check for uh, insectoid or insect references. That's that's generally speaking what I do. Um, and they just have some very interesting alien type of shapes that, you know, are really cool to, to explore. Alrighty, so that's, I mean, if you look at it, it does sort of like give you an idea of what things could be play so I'm gonna take my damn sander brush and just explore this a little bit more um, so let's say if we're gonna have some eyes I can just do this and that immediately would give you an idea where the eyes are and then maybe you know and, and the way that you position and the way that you place uh, the eyes or an indication of the eyes would definitely change the kind of you the, the way that you read the creature so it could be like you know if I put it here it will be more like a silly creature, you know. Um, if I put the the eyes kind of like in this type of shape, we are moving towards more like a, I don't know. This is still feel feels a little bit cartoonish, maybe because of the proportion. But you know, we start pulling the eyes apart, and then becomes a bit more realistic. Um, you know, we can add a few more, and these are just like little hints of where the eyes could be. Um, I'm, I'm always a fan of you know adding multiple eyes. I think it adds um, an, an a level of creepiness, an alien-like type of thing. So these are just little cuts that we can do with the damp standard brush, um, and this really helps to you know it, it, it's indications of not necessarily anatomy or details or anything like that, but it does provide you or at least gives you. Um, some extra lines that you can explore. Uh, it's like when you're doing a, a very rough sketch on paper, you might have a bunch of lines that they're not necessarily describing any particular shape, but it does give you an idea. So, yeah, I quite like this very organic process of figuring out what to do. And at the moment, it's again, it's just a blob. But hopefully, something would come out of this. So I, I kind of like the the idea of these shapes here. So I'm gonna exaggerate those a bit. And maybe give it a another one, if anything. So I can see some paneling effect already happening here that we can explore uh, explore a little bit further. So this area right here, I thought it could be kind of like the the jaw, but yeah, I think it could work. So let's just explore that as well. I'm going to redynamish, um, still keep everything pretty low. And another thing that you can use uh, in this sort of exploring technique is to hold the Alt key. That's just gonna give you the opposite, or the you know, yeah, the opposite effect of the damp standard brush. So I can hold the Alt key and then just push this thing here. And I'm I'm gonna show you another uh, technique that I use often for this type of thing uh, when I already have a, a rough idea of what I would like to 
to do in terms of, uh, you know, the, the, um, the features that I could use. So at, at the moment, this will change quite a bit. I mean, this is just, nothing is set in stone. This is, this is a very organic process, but I can already have a feeling that this could be some, you know, interesting panels that we can split. So I'm going to show you something uh, very cool that we can do. And let's just in, increase the indentation of this area here. And holding the Alt key again, just to bring things up. All right. So I think this could be like a pretty bulky guy anyway. So let's just exaggerate the neck. It could be a, a fat creature or something. Let's push this one forward as well. Um, and at this point, it's, it's really good to have like the, the thumbnail, this thing here. Um, it's sort of covered by the, the chat a little bit, but it's, it's really good to understand, you know, to keep eye on, on the silhouette. And that would really help to uh, to set up the the main shapes or the primary forms. Uh, let me just check the chat. Uh, is this is this human? No, uh, no, no. Uh, it could there could be a human in inside, and this could be just the the makeup for it. But nah, definitely, definitely not. Um, that reminds me of Dodge and Burns in Photoshop. Dodge, ah, oh, yeah. Well, that's the, that's um, a technique that uh, is probably more more your thing. Um, so, Zero Cartin, that's in the chat here. He, uh, we studied together. He was uh, ahead of me, and he's a fantastic uh, concept artist. Well, now, um, it's a. It, what's the name of uh, of your company? Felipe, uh, uh, Tree Creative. Also, I, for, I forgot the name, but some amazing concepts, and he's a, a fantastic guy. So maybe you should share, you should share your your link here because um, it is absolutely fantastic. The things that, yeah, Tree Interactive, that's the one. Yeah. So yeah, Felipe does like these really awesome concepts. Uh, I don't know how to describe the, the style, right? It's kind of like, it's not anime, but it has a lot of a, an influence of, of that, I believe. Um, but it, it's really dynamic and the, and the colors is really, you know, the, I really love the, the strokes and the, the roughness sometimes of the sketches. And yeah, so I, that's, that's, I remember that from when we were back in, in Costa Rica, studying animation back in the day. It's been a while. <laughs> All right. I think one of the things that is giving giving away kind of like the the build of this guy is that really chunky jaw. So I'm gonna pay special attention to that when I'm refining this piece. Um, or not? Yeah, kind of like refining it. But I'll I'll give you some ideas of what can be done in just a second. So I'm going to extend um, these to indicate a, a very thick and big trapezius here. Again, just to to continue with that idea of uh, this guy could be pretty bulky and pretty big, and yeah, again, this area. If I if I change this, for example, again, this is <laughs> super sketchy, really, really simple um, base. But if I go ahead and do this. Uh, it doesn't change much, but much. But having a, a, a smaller jaw, uh, it goes m better with a smaller frame, like that. Even though the the head is quite big, so let's undo that. I quite like the fact that this is a pretty big one, and we can even exaggerate it even more, right? Maybe not that much. That's right. All right, something like this. Uh, by the way, guys, I'm finishing up a 
Uh, it's already finished. There's a new ZBrush guide coming up uh, where I'm going to show you how to do polypaint. Oh, not how to do polypaint, how to use polypaint to create um, this kind of like the skin material, the skin uh, base. Hang on. So, all right, found it. Just so you can see this awesome thing that I was talking about. So this is from Felipe. So right now Felipe is in here. Cero Cartin is here. Um, are you still working with your two brothers? This is the, that's one of the the key features of Felipe. That's uh, pretty cool. He's, he's part of a triplet and they all do. Oh yeah, I can see it now. Anyway, I just share a link so you guys can have a look at what I'm talking about. Um, Hang on, this is saving. Awesome, all right. So I'm gonna turn on the thumbnail because it's getting on the way. Um, and now at this point, you know, it, this is still pretty basic, but we can start exploring this uh, a little bit more and maybe have a bit more control over, you know, how the, the shapes interact um, with each other. Uh, at this point, I think it's pretty important to to focus on that, on the transition of the shapes and, you know, avoid any type of detail. So all of these, you know, if I do a bit of smoothing and do redynamish, all of that is going to be gone anyway. So let's focus on on that and, and polish some of these shapes and make sure that they, they interact nicely. So one thing we can do, and it's something in this particular instance that we have very, um, you can sort of tell that this could be panels. Uh, there's something we can do to control the interaction of these shapes, um, and it should be pretty cool. So I'm going to show you with a custom brush that I have here. I call it the PM Sharpie, but all it is is just a, a standard brush with no lazy mouse, no Z add, and the RGB. And I'm going to fill this object with white and I'm gonna select a very dark color, just a um, black color. And I, I'm going to essentially paint the divisions or yeah the the lines that separate those panels right so i can just do this type of thing now at this point because we have a pretty low mesh uh to explore those shapes if i want to do a smaller kind of line here it's not necessarily the best definition <laughs> so one of the great things about sculptures pro is that it also works for color so if i enable sculptures pro again sculptures pro is that awesome tool in zebras that allows you to um, work kind of like without worrying about the topology at all uh, and it will create more topology so let me just paint with a different color so you can actually see what happens and I'm going to turn off the f uh, not the, f the line the fill so all I have is this custom brush that again is just a standard brush without lazy mouse and CAD and I have the sculptures pro enable with a color and as I as soon as I start doing that, you'll see ZBrush creates this color, right? It creates, not the color, but it, de it develops a bit more um, resolution based on the size of your brush. So if I increase my brush size and do this, it's going to be less polygons. If I scale it down, it's going to be a lot more polygons. So the resolution and the amount of points that is added to the sculpt is based on the size of your brush when you use the Sculptris Pro. But if I turn this off and the polypaint as well, there is no changes in the topology or or, or visible changes in the volume. There, actually, there are changes in the topology, but not in the in the main volume because I'm not adding anything. So it's just pure color. So um, and all of this is important just because I'm going to select a dark color, so you won't be able to see that as much. Uh, but I'm going to use this to draw. The lines that I want. So even though we have a pretty low res mesh, doing these type of things is going to be pretty sharp. Right? So the the idea here is to to focus on on certain lines that we could use that would somehow split the main areas. So something like that.
even something here. So this this feels like a solid piece, but we can split it and and hopefully find a, an interesting shape later. And maybe something around here. And what I'm what I'm doing is not just following some of the the lines that were suggested by the by the previous stage of the process. I'm also um, kind of like trying to figure out the the flow, uh, something that works with the design. So not just placing lines randomly. But this, this has to be set in flow. So for instance, here, I go in and do that, just to split that a bit. Maybe this actually should be a, a larger piece. Uh, this is another thing that it's important sort of to keep in mind that um, you know, they, there has to be a, a nice balance between you know this area that could have a, a lot of a smaller pieces or a smaller um, panels compared to this area that could be an area of rest for the eyes or where there's going to be less um, yeah less points for instance. Now, the important thing for this process is that whatever you place, uh, you need to close the loop. So, for example, this line, I have to close it. I'm just trying to figure out what the flow should be. So a panel like that, and then something, something here that could work in the same way. And all of this can change, but um, just make sure that if, if you're following alone, if you're doing something similar, the, the whole point is to try to close those loops. I'm going to do a few more here. There we go. So this is going to be a pretty big, pretty big chunk. So maybe we can close it there. And then we have this area here. Let's see what we can do. Maybe another one there and another one here. All right. And just to make my life easy, I'm just going to close this one here. And this area, this area should be a I feel maybe another one could be even added here. And we're just getting into the, what I would, you know, I would consider the pictorial territory here. So um, as I place this, because I'm placing sort of these lines to create the panels uh, that we're going to have, I'm also thinking about the, what would be the, the actual movement of this creature and what would be the functionality of having those panels so it could be protection armor or but this area you know if the if the guy is going to turn the head around this creature there should be some sort of less less hard area and more like a yeah fleshy part here so maybe we can do that as well um all right but i think overall this is working fine uh so now what we can do is go to a plugin that comes with ZBrush. So it, you don't have to download anything, but if you go to the ZBrush, uh, the, sorry, the Z plugin palette, there's this polygroup here. And there's uh, a few things that you can do. If you're working with sort of hard surface modeling, the polygroup, the actual polygroup uh, pop up, <laughs> or it's just kind of like an extra window. This one would give you a, a very nice result. In fact, let me show you what that does because you might find it interesting. It's not going to work as well with this. So let's just do a duplicate so I can show you what that does. And what I'll do is raise the dynamic resolution a bit, redynamize this bit, and then I'm going to do a clay polish a couple of times. Right. So what the clay polish does. Uh, really is just to sharpen some of those crevices a bit more and define some of those planes. Uh, the only reason I did that is so that I can show you this. So when you go to polygroup it, so the first button of this plugin, and we've done this 
in previous um, previous sessions um, it will open up this window right so this window is is the one that allows you to create polygroups based on those planes and that's the reason I use the clay polish so it you can move around in the same way that you move in in ZBrush uh, so I can let's enable symmetry uh, we can do that after actually and all we have to do is just click on an area let's say here right and it creates this uh, it's called a seed it's like a little sphere with a color so this would be a polygroup and then you can use this slider to sort of cover you know the areas you know the coverage so pretty decent and then you can add multiple ones so you can add maybe another one here and spread this maybe not as much and this doesn't look necessarily great <laughs> at this point but don't worry you can start adding more and it will just cover certain areas so maybe another one here right and this all of these works really well if you have defined the uh, what's the name the uh, the sharper edges between those So I'm gonna cancel that because I'm not gonna use that. I just wanted to, to show you. Um, again, if you take the dam sander brush, for instance, and do this, so holding the Alt key, and define this a little bit better, just doing that, when you go and use the polygroup it, you will be able to select these areas a lot better because Sirius is going to easily identify the difference between the, the different areas. Uh, but anyway, that's not the one that I'm going to be using. So let's go back to what we had. Uh, let me see the chat. So stream buffering. So are you guys having issues with the with the with the buffering, I don't know what's going on. Um, looks like my internet is fine. Yeah, it looks like everything is all right from my end. So yeah, I don't know if it might, it might be like a, an issue with restream or, or something. Um, but I'll try to go slower then <laughs> on the things that I click. But um, yeah, so going back to this guy, let's click on the C plugin. And this time I'm gonna use the, oops, the uh, polygroup it from paint. So you have these two options uh, from Bora or from from paint. So if I select the first one, Siri is going to look at those lines that we created. Let me turn on the poly frame actually. It's going to look at these lines that we added uh, that are pure black and it's going to create a polygroup based on all those points. It's pretty amazing. Let's click on that and wait for it. It's going to be a different polygroup for each of those those areas. Uh, you could have done the same thing just by, you know, painting or, or masking and, and, and that sort of thing, but this gives you a pretty simple and easy way to, to approach it. Now, if I turn off the poly paint here and poly frame, not poly frame, sorry, the, let's leave poly frame and turn off the line, you'll see all of those pieces now are polygroups. And this is fantastic because even at, at this stage that we are just sketching things, we can take something like a select rectangular, hold the control and shift, um, use double, and isolate this piece, right? Or or this piece uh, and that sort of thing. So that's what I wanted to be able to isolate this thing. Okay. Cool. So I think it worked really well. And, and you'll see that um, Sirius does a really nice average between the thickness of the line. So your line, let's, don't, let's do that. So the line that you create could be thicker or could be thinner, but it does a pretty good average between, you know, the, the thickness of this line to create the polygroup, which is awesome. So uh, the next step to continue refining this sketch and exploring this is to divide this into pieces that we can easily manipulate but add some so like volume to it because right now if I isolate this this is just a plane or a single sided not a plane a single sided polygon so let's do that um, there are different ways that you can approach this 
I'm going to show you a couple that I like and the kind of like automated one <laughs> that I prefer. So you could do it manually and that's, uh, you know, it's a fair enough approach, which could be like simply duplicating the entire mesh. So now I have two sub tools. I'm going to go into solo mode. So I only see the one that I have selected, hold control and shift and isolate this bit. And then I can delete hidden. So to delete hidden, you can go to the modified topology, delete hidden, and that deletes everything but this piece, right? And then once you have that, you can hold control and click and drag to Dynamesh it. If you don't have Dynamesh enabled, you can re-Dynamesh, but you Dynamesh and Siri is gonna close those gaps, right? And you can also, you know, in these very thin areas, like here, you can bring in the inflate brush and then fix that a little bit. Just add some volume, re-Dynamesh again. And then now you have this piece that you can start working on separately. So that's one thing, right? And this is what I, I like doing sometimes again, and that's just my personal preference because I like to do things manually sometimes. Um, and I know there are some, some ways to do things a bit faster, but that's what I like to do. Now, if you want to automate this process a little bit more, and especially in a project like, let's say this guy that's going to have plenty of panels, what you can do is uh, I'm going to duplicate just in case, and I'm also going to create, um, a new folder, just call it OR and just drop those in there. Turn that off and select that one. Cool. So this one is the one that has the panels, right? Let's just leave that on. And I'm going to go to the panel loops. So geometry, increasing no, modify edge loops, panel loops. All right, so panel loops is pretty awesome because it just looks at the polygroups and it's going to create panels. So I want to use just the default settings and then we can tweak that. So click panel loops. And let's wait until it does that. So now Sibrush will create based on the on the on the groups that we had, it's going to create different groups or different polygroups or panel, sorry, basically, if I smooth this out, you see they're individual pieces, they're separate, right? And the thickness of these panels, I mean, they, it has some thickness, and the thickness is determined here. We're going to come back to this in just a second. I want to show you what it does first. Uh, so now we have a bunch of panels that we can work with independently, and that's pretty awesome. That's what I want. So it's kind of like the automated version of what I just showed you. So let's undo all of that. Um, and just in case, I'm going to unify this whole thing. Yeah, just to make sure that it's a size that Sirius can handle a little bit better. And I'm going to duplicate that and put another one of those in there. All right. So let's go back to panel loops. And we can tweak a few of these things to, to get something uh, going that works a little bit better. So the thickness determines the, the thickness of that panel. So Let's increase the thickness quite a bit. So you see the difference. Click on panel loops. Right, so um, that's not what I wanted. That's because of the, the thickness. I, I just went a little bit too crazy with that. So let's go for 0 0.05. We can play with that. Still not good. So let's Reduce the thickness again. All right, something like this. It should be all right. But now you see that I get a bunch of like artifacts and things that work really well, um, not really well. And and the reason for that is because remember we use um, a Sculptris Pro. So there's a mix of triangles and, and squares or quads everywhere. And that that's a problem, right? That's what generates all of these things. So we're going to do something else before we get to panel loops. So let's undo that. And let me, let me turn on the line. And I'm going to change to another material. Uh, so it's lagging again. Uh, hang on. Not sure what that is. I think my internet connection, it, well, it tells me that it's fine. That's annoying. Oh, I do have a, a bit of a drop here, but 
let's see if that improves uh, the quality hang on I'm gonna double check that I'm not downloading anything I'm gonna close any other type of downloadable thing that I might have um, no I'm not downloading anything sometimes Adobe does updates on its own um, okay all good so yeah don't know if it's gonna fix anything but I I tried um, so this is the problem all of these little triangles that's what giving us that issue so one thing we can do before we do the panel ups is to smooth that that you know division between the polygroups so we can go ahead and use the polish by groups which for you guys would be under the formation palette that polish by groups just do that and Siri is going to look at the difference in between the polygroups and it's going to generate that that sort of gap or fix that gap all right so you can start to see a little bit more of those lines but um, that's what we need all right All right, so um, yeah, it looks like looks like it, it might be my internet connection. So what I'll do is I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the stream, and I'm gonna restart my modem and all of that, and come back in. So give me give me five minutes, guys, and and I'll and I'll come back. All right, so that just to make sure that the internet is good. Hang on, it just tells me that there was an issue, but it has been resolved based on what I can see here. So let me know if if it's getting better. It should be better now. I'm going to move it around just to see how much lag you guys get. Moving it really fast. All right. So if it looks better, I'm just going to stick with this. Hopefully, it won't drop again. Um, so let's go back to panel loops. Turn off the line. Again, we can do panel loops and if we still get those artifacts somewhere uh, we can increase the level of polish now if I let's uh, let's actually all of these pieces are separate so right if I smooth this out all of these pieces are separate so if I go ahead and use the auto group to create a group per each one of these pieces I can isolate the entire thing and see the thickness right so that's that's fine. I mean, it kind of works. You have these issues here, and again, those are due to the, you know, to those lines that we had. So I'm going to smooth this out so you can see what happened there, just because of that, you know, set of points that were there. So let's undo that. All right. Cool. Thanks for letting me know, guys. Um, all right. So there's a, a few more things that we can do in these panel loops. So if you turn off double, what a series is going to do is just not create a double-sided mesh. It's just going to split things a little bit, right? Uh, and this is, I mean, you can totally do it What I'm or follow the, the process that I'm showing you. It's, uh, but it's also the, the reason why I like to do it manually so that I can decide which ones to create. But let's just try with this. So you can use this polish to increase that a bit. So the result is going to be a lot smoother. Uh, so let's do panel loops again. Right. So you get a little bit less of this just because it is smoother. The other thing we can do is increase the thickness. Like about there. Right, and then you have this bevel effect, and you have this elevation. So the bevel effect is gonna give you that sort of like, um, if I do it again, oh, it's gonna, it's gonna be a bit, a bit extreme. But essentially, the bevel, what it does, is just give you a bevel between this polygroup that we can see here and the next one, or like the the border one. So it's gonna create that sort of bevel shape, and you have this point that you can use to to determine what is the shape of the bevel. So if you want something like a bit smoother, you can change this, this curve. But I'm not 
to worry about this. What I want to change is this elevation. So right now, Sirius is analyzing this the surface and the volume and it's taking whatever is going to be produced and it's elevating it or it's going to push it up. So that's another reason why all of those pieces that you can see are being more visible. So if I take this to minus 100, right, and do the panel loops, now we're going to essentially embed the result. So, and I also increase the thickness. So if I, let's go ahead and do auto groups as well. So like this one, you see now there's a lot more thickness going inside, right? And don't worry about this. This is like super sketchy. All of that can be tweaked and it's going to be improved a lot. I just want to show you a couple more things. So you see all of these lines. So these loops that you have here, that is determined by this slider. So you have a slider of five loops. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. So yeah, those are the loops. One, two, three, four, and five. So you can just you know change these. For me, that doesn't really make a difference because again, I'm gonna redynamize this, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so it's, it's part of the um, the sculpting process or the sketching. If you want to have something more control, and you know, panel loops is really awesome tool for that. You can you know have control of how many loops are added in the in the border and that sort of thing. All right, so I'm gonna do that. And remember, I just use the auto groups, and for you guys, the auto groups would be under the poly groups panel here. I just have it in a custom UI, uh, but that's the one that basically analyzes anything that is not like part of the same mesh, and it's going to auto group it. So now we have all of these pieces that look kind of like panels, but very messy. So now the point is to um, to to play around with this and 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 tweak them all. Now. There's a few other things that you can do. You can just split groups. So um, here on the split palette, you can click group split and Siri is going to look at all of these different groups and it's going to create subtools for each one of these parts. Uh, that's something that I would do later on, but at this point I might want to change the overall you know, shape of everything. So if I do that, then it's going to be pretty hard to move all of those subtools at once and, and easily manipulate them. So now that I have this, you know, weird sketch that is not very clean, <laughs> um, thanks to panel loop and all the sculptures pro that we did, what I can do is redynamish everything but preserve the groups. And this is an awesome technique that um, I use all the time when I'm doing this type of things. So it's essentially doing the same thing. I can redynamish this, and if I just dynamish it, we go back to pretty much what we had before. Maybe we have some issues, right? So we preserve some of those polygroups, but we come back to what we had. So, you know, we it's kind of like going back in time. So let's undo that. And I'm going to increase the resolution to maybe, let's go for 184 or whatever, something like that. All right. Now, what I want to do is click on the groups option here. Right. And let me show you what that is. So geometry. Dynamesh. So I have some of these right here in my UI, but you'll see it in here. So if you enable the groups um, when we redynamesh, so let's hold control, click and drag, Sirius is going to maintain those groups and it's going to dynamesh them individually, which is amazing, right? So now we have all those panels and we can hold control and shift and select one. And you see we have that thickness that we established with the polygroups, you know, and you can start like hiding bits and pieces. Uh, this is a really awesome technique as well to do hard surface, like, you know, like a helmet. Um, but we have all of these pieces in a way separate. Um, if we want to add more resolution, we can, right? Let's hold control, hang on, hold control, click and drag. Oops. Uh, if you get this issue, it might, it might have to do with the, with the thickness of the mesh and the resolution that you're adding. So just change the resolution or increase the thickness. Let's just use, use the move brush a bit. Okay. Um, yeah, and then we can, by the way, uh, the, the whole point of what I want to show you is that once you have dynamics with polygroups, enable or groups enable, you still have all of these pieces in a single 
um, yeah, in a single subtool. So all I have to do is just maybe go ahead and clean some of these things. I uh, have symmetry enabled as well, right? And I'm just gonna do a, a quick cleanup of a few things. But for the most part, everything looks all right. All right. Hey, Alex, how you doing? Yeah, more, more creature stuff. That's always good to see creature stuff. <laughs> right. So uh, cool. So I have those pieces. I can dynamesh them and, and all of that. But again, this is pretty basic. There's nothing, you know, there's, there's not necessarily a design going on here. It's just a base. Uh, so what I like to do is take one of those meshes that I duplicated. That's the big one. That one. I'm going to duplicate it again just in case. Put it outside of this folder and I'm going to rename it um, let's call it inside and let's call this one panels all right let's switch to a better sculpting tool um, so if I jump between these two you'll see one is kind of like the inside that we had with everything and the other one uh, is the panel so I'm going to take this one inside get out of solo mode um, I'm going to give it a I don't know, maybe a blue color, right? So that I can see where is this panel and where is this one. So I can go ahead and deflate this, the, the inside one, the blue one. Oops, before I do that, let's, let's read Dynamesh. There we go, and let's deflate it. Let's read Dynamesh again. So now we have something inside right uh, and the reason I do that is because for example this panel like I mentioned I don't want everything to be like a hard shell so if I go back to my panels I can select this one that is a if you remember it's a polygroup and I can invert that and I, I just hit that piece uh, maybe this area as well it doesn't make much more sense uh, to have like a hard piece in here the, the character would you know, won't be able to move the head properly, so I'm going to hide that one as well. Uh, and this is where you can start figuring out, you know, what areas you want to preserve and which ones you don't want to preserve. Uh, maybe this one inside here. It's not, um, yeah, something like that. Uh, maybe for the eyes, that I don't want to have something there. Uh, and that's it. Maybe for this one, I think this one could stay. All right, so I just hit those those pieces and I can go ahead and delete hidden, All right? And now I have the panels and I have that base. So I just, I'm gonna leave that base in there so that I can, you know, tweak it if I need to. Uh, but what's great about having those panels with Dynamesh and with the polygroups is uh, two things. You can use the move brush with the AccuCurve the same way that I've been using it, just to adjust things, maybe push this one out a bit and, and all of that uh, but we can start playing around with that sort of like overlapping of panels and, and really explore the design and, and make it more interesting by simply using the move topological so the move topological is going to look at the continuity of the topology so let me give you an example so this brush is going to look at you know as soon as you click somewhere it's going to look at what other points are associated or or part of the continuity of that mesh and if there is a gap or if there's no continuity it's not going to affect the rest so because we have those panels in polygroups as well uh, the polygroups they don't really make a difference but because they're different panels i can just click here really close to all of this and because this is the first one i clicked this is the only one that i move so i can start exploring the the shape of this a bit more and using the smooth brush maybe this thing needs to be you know like that so we can start up uh, you know figuring this out what what these things are i'm um, gonna turn off the poly poly frame so that it's actually easier to to see the the design itself um yeah and, and it can start pushing these things out and i'm not worried about the topology because this is a still a dynamic object so at any point i just go you know what I, i'm destroying these points too much Let's redynamesh and Siri's gonna redynamesh everything um, as well. I'm gonna do a bit more resolution. Mm. 
there we go. And let's go ahead and start exploring this mandible on well the, the jaw. And we can also use the acute curve as well. So I'm gonna push this out as well and start to overlap these panels. Maybe this jaw, we can make him a bit more aggressive, this guy. And then start exploring um, some more shape language and, you know, depart from the the nice rounded shapes and make some something a bit more aggressive with these triangle lines. All right, so something like this, for example, can overlap even more. And that, that could sort of suggest as well that the, you know, the the actual armature of the, of the head or the anatomy of the head is uh, kind of like modular somehow, and it could be, it could be flexible maybe. Maybe with this one, for example, with this one right here, I can explore um, something that that helps to to maintain the the eye socket. Or not the mind. yeah, like just to define the eye socket and, and keep the eyeballs. If I put some eyeballs there, um, that could be a a way. But it's not necessarily attached to anything else. It's kind of like floating as well. All right. I think I'm going to overlap this a lot more. All right, not entirely sure about the, the jaw um, anymore. I think I think this, this should be a solid piece now that I, that I think of. Um, so I'm just gonna show you something else. So for instance, let's just push this one like that. And I'm gonna isolate this one and these, these pieces in the selection. So um, let's go into solo mode as well. So these are three different Three different panels. Uh, again, what we can do is take the inflate brush, and I'm just gonna inflate these pieces to merge them together a little bit, or just get them closer. There we go. Right, and all I have to do really is give it a new polygroup. So Control W. So that's gonna be. This is still a, an individual set of pieces. This is still individual. Um, there's no continuity of the topology, as you can see. They're just overlapping there. Uh, however, because I give it a single polygroup next time that I dynamesh, ZBrush is going to treat it as a single mesh. So that's how you merge things. And if you if you want to do another one or create a new panel, again, all you have to do is just give it a polygroup and dynamesh with that group, and, and that's it. Uh, all right, so I think these ones kind of work. I'm going to isolate these ones and smooth that. I'm actually going to smooth these quite hard just to, to soften the transition of this. And I'm going to push the, uh, this would be kind of like the shoulder plate, maybe. 
and maybe exaggerate the area here. All right. This is the type of things that I like to spend time working on. So this thing, I mean, it kind of works, but just to make it feel more natural, it, it's not too perfect the way that things fit, or I don't think it should be. Um, so that's that's the type of thing that I like to do, just tweak it like that. Uh, but let's say this this panel here, maybe it's creating too too much of a gap. The same thing as as the one here, and that's why we're gonna come back with the with the piece inside. I just wanna make sure that this jaw is solid and it works fine. It's like squarish. Let's go for something like this, maybe. And I see some activity in the chat. I just I'll open it in just a second, or I'll look at it. I have it open already. Uh, by the way, so because we use uh, polygroups or autogroups to generate groups. Um, these groups on the left-hand side is, is different, or they are different from the ones on the right-hand side. So one thing you can do is just mirror and well, and then you have the same in both sides, so you can hide them at the same time. So that's what I just did there. And this is kind of like a, a smaller piece that we can definitely use Maybe not as a as part of the eye, but uh, you know it could be a um, a design choice to be able to give the, the character some expression, perhaps. And you know what? Let's just drop in some eyeballs <laughs> so that we we can have a, a reference of where to continue to place these these bits. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, there is a new macro actually in 2021. If you go to macros, and I have some custom macros, but in the the ones that come with zeros, there's one that is called append eyes, which is pretty cool. So you can click append eyes, and zeros would just append a couple of spheres, give it a dark color and a toy plastic material that gives you that nice sort of highlight. Let's just give it a second. Hopefully, it's not gonna crash. <laughs> Uh, let me just see the chat in the meantime. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Watch this process. All of that is going to be in the Pixel Edge channel, so all all good. Um, hey Alex, how you doing? Taldon, how's it going? Thanks for tuning in. Um, Felipe, so do you recommend using more polygroups versus separate objects? Uh, I think that's just um, a personal workflow uh, thing. I prefer to have separate objects just because I'm more, I think that's more kind of like old school. I don't know. It's just going to be easier for me. Um, hang on. Before I continue with that train of thought, let me just show you that uh, if you select the eyes that Sirius create with this, this macro um, and you have the symmetry enabled and you scale them down like this, it's not going to, it's going to scale based on the center of the world, right? But I want to just scale them in the center of the volume, so local symmetry. So I'm going to enable local symmetry for you guys will be in the transform palette, local symmetry, just scale this like that. So that's a different scale. Um, I'm going to go for a smaller eyes, just chuck that in there. Drop it in there. So that's going to be the, the eyes, maybe. Okay, that I think that's that looks all right, and that gives you an indication of what the <laughs> what this creature is. Um, the the blue color is bothering me a little bit, so I'm just gonna make it more like a fleshy tone. All right, so uh, going back to what um, Felipe asked. So the 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 advantage of have like separate objects is that you can use separate processes in each one of them. So if I separate, let's say this piece, right, from the rest, uh, what I can do is, for example, do a series measure and have like a cleaner piece already in there. Whereas if I keep it everything within 
this DynaMesh with polygroups, whatever I do, it's applied to the entire um, yeah, the entire subtool. So I would definitely separate those pieces, but that is something that I would apply in the next, like further down the track. So at this sketching process, I prefer to have everything at once and just use polygroups to be able to isolate things and, and merge things together. Uh, so for instance, if I had separate pieces, and let's go back to the move brush. If I have a bunch of separate pieces, and what I want to do is change the, the shape or the silhouette of this area, to do this with separate pieces, you'll have to go to the C plugin, go to the transform, uh, transpose master, merge everything to one sub tool, add all the changes, go back to the T post to bring it back here. So it becomes more of a, yeah, a workflow issue or not issue, but it, it totally depends on, on what you want to create. But uh, I, yeah, I prefer to, at this stage, that the design is still pretty, pretty raw. Um, I like to mature the, this, this design until the design is more solid um, to split things up. So yeah, you can use the move brush like that to do these sort of things. Um, anyway, what I want to do now is start pushing things, pushing the design a little bit. So I'm going to start bringing some maybe spikes like that. Um, and I have a feeling that maybe this this area right here shouldn't be there. Yeah, that makes a difference. Um, so, you know, let's take this one. Uh, we can also mask, and that's another really cool trick about using these polygroups in this fashion. We can mask this isolated mask it, sorry, then bring back everything, invert the mask, and we can use the deflate option just to deflate it a little bit and then smooth it. Uh, but I don't think I'm going to use this actually. Maybe let's bring in the gizmo, center to the unmask areas. I have local symmetry and I can just do the, this type of stuff. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what this piece would be. I'm just changing the size and maybe the inflate brush to increase the thickness. Nothing is happening to ZBrush. There we go. Um, so, I don't know. It could be, it might, might not be a panel. So, it might be something else that goes there. Some fleshy bit. <laughs> um, clear the mask. But let's say that I want to make this piece now part of the other one. I can just split it and merge it together. But I think, I don't know. Uh, I'm not. I'm not happy with this. I'm just going to delete it. Right. And that's what I'm saying. This is all part of the uh, the design process. And at this time, at this stage, it looks uh, it doesn't look very interesting to me. <laughs> so one thing we can do is because we have polygroups, is merge everything together. So uh, let's say let's go to merge merge visible. That's gonna take everything that's visible. It's gonna create a new tool that I can copy and paste into here. And I'm just going to hide everything else. So I basically just merge all of these together. You can also use the merge merge down to get that. Um, Titan, I think we're using the ECG bin. Oh, awesome. No worries. So glad that you're in like uh, that you're liking the the UCG course. Um, for those who don't know, that's the uh, ultimate ZBrush guide course for absolute beginners. And we closed enrollment a, a week ago or a couple of weeks ago, and it's been phenomenal. Uh, I can see a lot of progress of all the students working with that. So I'll try to make it available next year as well. And for those who asked me last stream about the extra mile, um, I apologize, but I won't have the time to open it um, before the end of the year. So um, I'll do my best and have it have it ready for anyone that wants to enroll uh, towards the beginning of the year. So January, uh, roughly. So if, you, if you're planning to, or if you wanted to enroll, um, this year, unfortunately, I won't have time to open enrollment, but it will be definitely up next year. All right, so the reason I merge all of these things is because I'm not happy with the silhouette. So if you look at the silhouette of this guy, actually, we can just go to flat and turn this off. It's not, it's not very interesting. It's all right, but it's not very interesting. So I can take my move brush with all of those tools, 
make sure I have symmetry enabled and I can start exploring shapes a little bit more. Mm, maybe I want to preserve the roundness of the eyes, so I'm going to mask these ones so that I don't affect the eyes. But now I can start move all my panels, all the all the flesh thing as well, and just try to find something that's, you know, a bit more interesting for a creature than what I had. And we still have the polygroups, right? So if at any point let's say I want to extend these things, I can take the move topological and do the same thing. Just push that, like so. So now this is starting to give me a some some better ideas of you know a, a more interesting design i don't know uh, so all of these techniques that i've been showing you are purely design exploration really uh, but to have control over the way that you do it that's really all there is to it So it's a mix of, um, yeah, a mix of different techniques, but when you start to combine them and understand a bit of the, of the process, I guess, or the, you know, the steps of the process, even if it is just a very sketchy workflow or, or a workflow for a very sketchy creature, um, it starts to, to make sense. Um, so I'm starting to feel like this is kind of like a crab. Um, like a crab creature. So I'm going to try to uh, bring those ideas in. Um, and because I started this without any reference, this would be the point when I start to, when I find something that looks a bit more interesting, that's going to be the point where I where I go and start finding some re references and, you know, anchor some of these things to reality or, or just making them more, whether they're more functional or whatever they are, uh, if I use reference, it's going to help quite a bit. I'm going to use the inflate brush as well. Just going to add more, more thickness to it. In fact, you can just, because this, the, the flesh bit is also, um, a separate polygroup. If you redynamish everything, uh, with a specific dynamic resolution, it's going to give you that, um, the ability to, to continue refine, to refine this. But I think that works. I'm just going to isolate these bits, give them a bit more thickness. And before I dynamish this one as well. And this one as well. I think it needs to be thicker in some areas. All right. I'm going to show you something really cool. Um, or the next, yeah, the next part, which is really, really cool, I think. Um, yeah, I'm happy with this. I mean, we have about 40 minutes left or 45 minutes left. So um, I reckon we can just wrap up the, the sketching process a bit. So let me just add a bit more of that. By the way, um, I should say that even if you merge, let's say if you use the inflate brush to merge these things like that, so something like I did with the with the jaw here, even if you do that, that doesn't mean that Sirius is gonna merge them together because they're still polygroups. So you can totally do that, right? Um, I just want to create a little bit of a gap in certain areas, like I said. Um, Felipe, yeah, that's right. So more dependency on the polygroups uh, at the beginning. I think that's that's the easiest way to put it. That's right. And then you can split it to have more control over each piece. Um, but yeah, Samurai Craft. <laughs> yeah, that, that could work. I suppose that's that's a good way. Um, yeah, definitely that could be something. Samurai crab. Um, push this one down. All right. The only thing that I don't like about this design is, I mean, well, not this design, but this sort of like paneling designs I, is that. Everything sometimes feels too too perfect. I don't know. I like to have like that sort of imperfection of overlapping pieces. 
like that. But again, depending on the on the reference that you're using, that might be the way that it is. Um, all right, I'm gonna isolate this, and I'm gonna use maybe the trim dynamic just to push things a bit. And now that I have done that, and I have a maybe a design that feels it's a bit more interesting, it has an, a more interesting silhouette as you can see here from the side view as well. No, I'm going to do a quick save. <laughs> um, now that I have this done in terms of design, um, it's getting closer to something that I can explore and refine. Um, I can go ahead and split this and, you know, continue with the, the integration process, which is what I think is pretty cool. And that's what I'm going to show you now. Let's wait until it does the autosave. Uh, I have the undo history, so that's an important thing to turn off. So let's go to file, turn off undo history, so that it doesn't take that that long. I'm not interested in keeping those um, undo history. But if I increase, yeah, much more interesting. So again, I'm, I'm going to try to leave it here as in this exploration, because this is a a part of the process that takes me the longest just to figure out what I what I like um, also making sure that there is a certain flow with the shapes and what I mean by that is you see the, the panels or the lines they sort of follow a certain a certain yeah a certain flow uh, and that for me is quite important in the way that you read the design and the and the composition like if you treat your character as a composition composition let me just give you an example so uh, if you take this, so these these lines, although they're just different panels or just different shapes, they sort of have a a flow, and that's what I'm trying to look or, or try to refine and and emphasize when I'm doing this design that there's certain flow. I don't have um, I don't want to have things like I have this here and then some cut lines in there. You know, they, they have to have certain flow. Um, and that's just because we we are sort of like, and this comes, I think this is the, the style principles, right? That uh, we sort of read the, the smoothest path. So if you have like a series of dots like that, <laughs> this is kind of like a, a bit more of a, on, on design, but you know, it, it, is, it is relevant. And then you have maybe another one here. Right, so this is just a bunch of dots that are put together, but our brain will try to read the smoothest line. So, in other words, when you look at this arrangement of circles, you tend to do this, like your eye would tend to do that, and then just look at that one, rather than doing, oh, I'm gonna do this, and then going this way, right? And this is kind of like an unconscious thing, um, not unconscious, sorry, subconscious thing, <laughs> uh, but you know what I mean? So this is what I'm trying to achieve with this, these lines. So instead of breaking it, I'm, I'm helping the, uh, I'm treating the character as a composition when I'm designing so that the, the, the person that is viewing this character can read this in an easier way. Um, and it should take just a, a matter of seconds to understand uh, the design, really. So that's why, what I'm trying to achieve. All right, so I think I like the, the big, lumpy shoulders, but maybe, yeah, something like that. That's, me that's better. Cool. But again, looking at the different, at the different angles, trying to achieve the same thing that I just mentioned. So from the front, it looks cool, but we try to apply it to other areas as well. All right, so let's say, let's say that I'm happy with this. What I'm going to do is um, clear my mask, because remember I had the the eyes are, were masked. Just double check from the masking palette, because the the polygroup, uh, clear mask, not the polygroup, the poly paint of the, of the eyes is black, so pretty hard to see whether I have it masked or not. <laughs> um, all right, so let's hold Control and Shift to isolate 
the base and let's split hidden so split hidden and now I have let's just mm, let's create a folder for the previous one so um, let's call this one iteration one let's drop that in here all right and also let's take this one sorry this one hide the eyes split hidden so now we have essentially the same thing that we had in the in the other folder but this one is is a lot different so let me just give you an example of that design process in action so I'm gonna go shift s to drop it in the canvas and then select this one look at the the massive difference that the, that this process um, allows you to to play around with the, the shapes and, and and does so this one feels more like a cricket but it's not as interesting so the in terms of the shape language this is just an oval shape that has been yeah like a cricket <laughs> um or the cricket head but this you know it's all right but it's not as interesting whereas this one um we start to play around more with the with the empty spaces right and just give more and this is actually pretty good to to also help read the the design and all that and and we we start to play again with the um the shape language like i said so we have more pointy areas like that um and in terms of the of how we read this type of shapes we 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 kind of like associate uh, aggression or maybe speed or not necessarily speed but aggression and uh, <laughs> sharpness with those you know very pointy areas whereas if we have something rounded it's more of a, a dull shape or uh, we associate that shape with dullness or um you know something that is not very reliable uh, very soft um anyway and and what i want to do with this creature is create something a bit more uh, yeah more like a a, a, a samurai crab, okay, i guess so i'm going to clear that up um go back to this guy all right so now i'm going to take this base and i'm using the the inner side of the inner piece i'm going to increase the resolution a bit right and what I want to do is start integrating this a little bit more. So I can do a few things. I can just use the inflate to see what that gives me, what that brings it. I think that is too much. Or I can take the inflate brush and then start pushing things closer to the to the panels. So I want to see a bit of that sort of flesh coming through and trying to integrate. And this is how I'm going to start figuring out how all of these panels are being held by, by the design, really. Or, yeah, because there, there should be something in there that's going to hold these panels together. I'm going to go into solo mode and inflate all of that quite a bit just so I can see it. Make sure that, yeah, so now I can just turn it back with a smooth brush. but I know it's there. So maybe around here. Right, so that's what I want to see. Uh, some bits and pieces that are coming through from that original, that original mesh that is going to give us the kind of like the fleshy look. And we're going to figure out that in a, in a second, like the, the lines in here. So that's, that's it really. I'm going to select the, the panels. I'm just going to adjust a few things. Again, I'm, I'm rushing a little bit this process because when I when I rotate and see the things like that, that maybe this thing is like touching this a little bit, uh, I go like, no, this should, there should be a, a more consistent gap here. And I start doing little nudges and that sort of thing. And that's why I spend a lot of time in these areas. But 
for the sake of moving forward and just showing you the, the rest of the technique, which is pretty cool. Uh, I'm just going to leave it like that. So all of these, see, all of these overlapping, this, this is really enjoying, enjoyful, joyful, joyful to do. <laughs> all right. Uh, I'm going to go back to the flesh and I'm going to take the eyes and I'm going to push them forward. They're too embedded now. There we go. Um, I feel that we need some some more flesh here as well, some more area of tissue surrounding the the eyes. And if we go back to the panels, let's just adjust this a bit. I'm going to try to give it a bit more of an expression just by pushing the the panel down and it creates that almond shape of eye in here and then the rest could be more like like a flesh or like yeah the skin or the muscle wrapping around here all right so let's do uh, another fun bit um i'm gonna redynamish all of this oh before I do that, I forgot to turn on groups. There we go. Maybe a bit more resolution. There we go. And the same thing for the, the inner part. I think I'm going to do more resolution as well. Right. And now we can start blending things a little bit or um, sculpting rather than... I mean, we've been sculpting, but kind of like a more of a design. So this is what I want to show you. See these areas? I feel like the the bones, not the bones, but this hard shell should be half shell and have more, you know, tendons or tissue, whatever, right? So if I do this, I want to take this and spread it around here, right? But I want to, as soon as you start getting to these parts to, to thin out and this will kind of like become sort of like tendons or, or something like that, right? So something you can do is if you select the, the inner side, um, you can take something like the snake hook brush. And this is what the snake hook brush does. Also, let's turn off RGB, right? You can just move things around. Um, it's going to create those weird polygons because we don't have, I mean, we're you're pulling the, the geometry essentially. So just to show you what it does, right? Um, but you can also bring in the Sculptress Pro and it will also help. So enable in Sculptures Pro, Sirius will figure out the geometry as you push that along. But if you use this Sculptures Pro with as not as, as the snake hook brush, uh, whatever you have available in terms of the visibility in ZBrush or the other subtools, Sirius can um, wrap or slide the geometry along the other surfaces. So what I mean is if you click and hold the Alt key, you see that slide happens along that surface that is visible. So again, click and Alt, get a bit bigger. So Alt and click, I'm just doing that to spread this apart and cover that a bit better. Right. I'm going to redynamish and go back to, let's say, the clay. Let's use the clay brush. Yeah, let's use the clay brush without Sculptress Pro. All right. So now with the clay brush, I can start working on the volumes of how this thing might actually work and add some indication of those muscles. Maybe this is actually pulling this area as well. So and this is another fun part of the process for me, um, just to figure out that integration, how things might work, even though it's a creature. I, you know, I like to spend time thinking about the functionality before, um, you know, and this is something that comes with, I would say, 
time and experience, I suppose. But before I wasn't too bothered about functionality. I just I used to uh, create things that oh, if they if they, this looks cool, um, that's it. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. But um, with time, you you start to think well, it might look not as cool or uh, you can you can try to force yourself and make it look better. Uh, but functionality for me becomes a very important part of the design process. And and that's just when uh yeah, that's what is going to probably give it more believability. I cannot pronounce that word. Make it more believable. <laughs> All right. So this is just the the clay brush. Let's let's have a look at the chat actually. Um big difference, yep, parts of the Caribbean. Um your active points are over 37 millions and totals are over and your total is over 2 million. Is this level of points okay for any scope? Yeah, absolutely. Like I, I honestly do not worry about points of millions of polygons. Like it doesn't bother me a lot, uh, like at all, because um, yeah, like unless I'm trying to hit a specific amount of polygons, I don't really look at that. Um, or unless I start to see, you know, I start to struggle with the with the movement. It's just that I have a bunch of hidden tools, right? So the total points that you're referring to, it is part of the hidden ones as well. But the active ones, um, well, the active one is the one that I have selected. So in total, I actually I'm using, let's say, 164, 600. So I have less than a million polygons in the ones that you can see here. So that's totally fine. Uh, I just like to keep these ones in here. But, you know, in, um, in a more production project, I might instead of having folders like this, I can just save different stages of the process and that will make it easier. I'm gonna do a quick save as well. Um, next yep, okay, cool. Um, seems tomorrow there's going to be a live stream. Yeah, tomorrow there is a live stream from the Pixology guys. Uh, unveiling the 2021.5 update just has some awesome stuff cool all right yeah cool so um i'm gonna also start bringing a bit of the damn thunder brush for both of these things And the standard brush is just gonna help me figure out maybe some of the the points of tension, I suppose. And where these things sort of embed into the the hard shell. And you see even the, the mesh inside, it sort of like looks, it looks like an interesting creature by itself. Uh, but I'm not doing details or anything. I'm, like you can see, this is pretty rough, just markings that I can further develop. But it at least gives me an idea of, you know, the flow again, uh, where are the deposits of fat, uh, where can I put muscles that kind of like make sense and it also goes with the with the paneling and all of that so maybe when I emphasize this let's go um, let's just hide this for a second I wanna add a bit of a um, eyelid here so I'm just holding the alt key Okay, let's bring back the other one. 
All right, so we're starting to, you know, get a get an interesting series of volumes here. I'm going to bring in the move, um, the normal move with the Aki curve, so we get this sort of pointy effect as well. And again, just trying to bridge that gap between the the cool set of pieces that we had before and something that would be functional for the design. So I'm leaning towards like sort of this predator type of face as well. All right. Um, if you guys have any questions about this process as well, feel free to put it in the chat. We we still have like 25 minutes, and I'm, I'm just gonna hope to wanna I wanna try to add a few details or not details, but suggestions of details in the panels as well. But I wanna make sure that the that everything that is being you know, give it a sense that everything is being held together by something else. All right, maybe some of these panels are actually more embedded into it, so I'm just going to push the skin there and bring in the dumps on the brush and again just create that sort of idea that this this is not embedded but it's kind of like pushing these areas that could be you know fat so it's creating some te tension points here um, and all of these things gives me ideas of how to how to continue the process of are refining this more functional design so I can see okay maybe there's, there's some kind of tendon here that might be used for opening this part of the jaw and um, it is connected like inside or from the the outside I don't know uh, but at least I have that that idea there I'm gonna go ahead and push these guys back a bit. All right, so. So far, I have something that I think it has legs. Um, it probably, I feel like the 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 shoulders now uh, are maybe too close, uh, too too high for these guys. So let me just give you an idea of what I'm thinking of. Uh, so if I take this this creature, and because of the size of the head, I feel like the the shoulders. If this is the actual shoulder blade, the the actual deltoid would be around here. Right, and that means my body, my body frame, like the torso, wouldn't be as I as big as I wanted. So it, it's just an indication, right? I haven't created anything, anything like that. But if I push this maybe down a bit, like that, and extend it, it will feel like this guy's a lot bigger, right? Uh, which is probably what I want. I don't know if that makes sense, but so we can just isolate this bit. Mask it, invade the mask, bring in the gizmo, and we can just move this around. So this is just kind of like that plate. So I'm thinking of doing this and just moving those things. You'll see that opens up this space as well that you can see inside a bit more, and and that also suggests that this muscle is actually part of the it could be the you know the the trapezius for example. Um, so yeah, feels a bit better. And again, just playing around with that idea of the design um, and, the, and the shape language. So, for instance, 
I'm just trying to give you an idea idea of what goes in my in my mind when I'm when I'm designing these these things. But uh, it's not like a formula. It's just I'm just letting you know what this is what happens. Uh, so we have this shape that sort of S shape there. Um, and I want to generate contrast with these, but at the same time, I want to maintain the same uh, visual language, right? So, uh, in order to create, or I think they, they, in order to create, um, kind of like more, um, how can you call it, like more emphasis or like a, a, a point of interest, really, you need to generate contrast, and you can generate contrast in many different ways. Uh, you can have, let's say, a square versus. Uh, I don't know, a, a rounded shape, or you can have, you know, just color, or you can have texture, same color, but different texture. So you can create contrast in many different ways. Uh, in this case, I have that sort of shape here that I just mentioned with this area, um, but I want to also maintain the shape language overall. So I could take this one and create this sort of similar shape, but it's in contrast. So it's like you have this, uh, if you simplify this, you have this uh, convex or two concaves, uh, two concave shapes, um, yeah, in contrast with each other. So it, it becomes kind of like a, a couple of claws. I don't know if that makes sense, but again, that's part of what I'm thinking as I move these things around and, and yeah, so <laughs> I'm gonna give this a bit more of a head here, uh, but I'm happy with the, with the changes of the, of these shoulders, maybe I'm going to push the this down to do the same thing, just to to help with that. Sort of like if I if I were to close this entire creature, you have this visual line that goes like this, and then you have this one that goes like this. So that's 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 what I'm aiming with <laughs> this, uh, but it, it it doesn't have to be like that. It's not that this works otherwise it doesn't you can totally you know push this up and you know and and say and have the same thing but in that case I wouldn't have that contrast that I'm looking for so you have these two shapes that go like that and you know it kind of works oops sorry about that that's not what I wanted so yeah let's undo that um, I think it works better this way All right, so I'm gonna take the, the base and I'm just gonna expand a few of these things just because, you know what, well, let's go into solo mode. And I'm gonna use the masking and I'm gonna push this down. Whoops, what happened there? Dynamash. All right. Cool. So yeah. Sorry. It's just um, I'm adding a little bit of more, adjusting the volumes again in here, and we can use the the clay brush to just add an indication maybe of what the maybe the scapula for this guy would be. I don't know something like that. Uh, but yeah. So I think starting to look a little bit better. We can exaggerate this a bit more and refine some of these areas that got sort of stretched and damaged by the by the addition of, of geometry. But as you can see this is pretty you know pretty organic process really. And the design would keep evolving as I you know maybe add limbs and, and that sort of thing. So I'm gonna jump into adding some some indication of details on the on the panels. Uh, let me just see the chat. Uh, hey Paul, can you give me a tip on how to get rid of weird wavy effect that appears every time I turn double-sided display mode after using dy dynamic close simulation in 
I'm, I'm desperate. Well, that's a, a very specific thing. Um, I would have to see it <laughs> to understand what what the what the question really is and see if I can give you any answer. So sorry, that's too too specific. Uh, thanks, Alex. Glad you like it. Um, well, I have a question. What would be the best way to make a sharp endpoint when it's uh, Siri meshed? The sharp endpoint, like just to preserve, like something, something like this. And if you wanna Siri mesh it, um, it, it should be pretty easy to to keep. Uh, but if you sort of like split it into multiple polygroups, uh, let's say maybe this side is a polygroup and this on the side is another polygroup. Uh, you can keep groups and series will try to maintain that as well. Another thing is that you can uh, you can you can use the adapting and you can maintain that point a little bit better. Um, and you can determine how much topology you are giving it. So let me just show you quickly. So yeah, let's. So if you have, uh, hang on. So if you have something like this, hey, that's too, too silly. Let's do it like that. If you want to maintain that that point, um, maybe the easiest way would be let's go to Siri Mesha. And if I just click Siri Mesha, Siri is gonna adapt because I have that adapt on and try to adapt the points. So it should do a pretty a pretty decent job. Let's let's do that. Remesh. Let's try that again. Uh, so it should give you a pretty decent result. But if you're struggling to get this effect, uh, because again, this is a very simple thing, uh, what you can do is, I'm gonna enable my polypaint brush. Uh, you can use the this thing here, use polypaint and control the density. So you can just fill or just paint everything with this color or less. So lower values will give you less points in this area and then higher values will give you more points in here. So I just painted that and I told ZBrush, or I'm telling ZBrush to use polypaint and adapt. So I'm gonna click zero measure. It's not gonna be great, but it should give you, you know, more points around this area because that's what I painted with that color and less points in here. So you can control that in that way as well. All right, let's go back to the creature thing. Even from the, from the combination, you see massive change in the design, right? All right, so uh, with the dumps and the brush, what I'm going to do is start defining these this, um, panels or these hard shells a bit more. So I'm just trying to do these sort of wobbly lines that I can refine later. Right, but I can also use, let's say, the, the damp standard brush with the Alt key just to push some lines out. And that's going to really help to emphasize the, the fact that these are sort of hard panels or like a shell. So I'm jumping between the Alt key and the non-Alt key. Right. Um, I'm still not 100% convinced about this area of the mouth, so this is something that I would keep working definitely a bit more. Um, but again, I'm not entirely sure what to do with it, so I won't spend much time on that today. So I'm tar tar targeting the the outside areas of this, like the borders to sharpen those a bit. Holding the Alt key and then going with the normal effect and push that, that in as well. Also a good idea is to variate the every now and again the, the size of your brush so that not everything is, again, not everything is perfect or the same size as well.
and at some point if you want to be very specific at what you're doing and work in certain areas because you have polygroups you can just isolate that go into solo mode and maybe just explore a few things in here so that's the uh, one of the the advantages of keeping everything with polygroups and the way that I, the way that I did it basically but you can totally use subtools as well at this point and just split everything and and use the old key to quickly jump between them but again just because I'm I'm not a hundred percent happy with the overall design I would I would like to be or have the ability to keep exploring the the proportions and and that sort of thing before I jump into details this is I wouldn't consider these details this is just thinking about the transition of shapes and adding some more secondary forms than anything but I want to have the ability to go back to certain things if I want to so that's why I'm not splitting things just yet All right, so I think I'm starting to develop a an interesting pattern here that I can that I can use to populate the, the rest of these panels. Alright, let's do these ones as well, just to give it some... some extra areas here. Um, and maybe, you know, if this would really be kind of like a inspired, uh, like a samurai inspired crab, um, I might start to think about these panels um, even if it's organic just some sort of pattern that sort of suggests that thing in a way so I'm gonna keep it very yeah very organic All right, get in there. So again, this once you have like the main shapes going through this process that I just did very, very rough, but um, and and quickly, it becomes very like I said. Uh, I've always said this. Like when I get to this point, it's very therapeutic. It's just uh, I'm just I can zone out. Um, that's why it's for me kind of like hard to keep up the, you know, what, explaining what I'm doing because I just sort of zone out and start. Just doing this and forget what I'm what I'm talking about sometimes, um, but yeah. <laughs> so um, this is started to look alright. Uh, let's also sharpen some things in here, and I'm gonna start adding some volumes so that it's not just you know damp sander brush everywhere. Not that it's a, a bad thing, but more than anything, just to refine the the volumes that these lines that I'm creating are are pushing so the, the the lines should be the result of you know the I don't know the the growth of these pieces or the growth of these areas of this crab's body so uh, I need to make sure that they they feel connected or they feel part of this rather than just yeah just so that it makes sense <laughs> to have them there So for instance, this area right here, I can just do that so that it feels like these two 
it's hard for me to explain what I'm trying to say, <laughs> but let's say that if, if these are two panels that when this crab was a baby, they were separated like that, right? As it grows and everything starts to push into each other, these areas, they sort of like mold into each other like this. And I don't know if that makes any sense, but that is that is what I'm thinking about, you know, even like how this creature was before it was, uh, you know, when he was a baby or, or whatever. Um, so it's just a another another thing that I think when I'm deciding when I'm deciding what to do in the design, and I just thought I'd mention that. All right, so let me just check the chat. We come back to this in just a second. Actually, before I do that, this one feels a bit too thick. Let's just thin that out a bit, and I haven't done any sharpness of this one. All right, let's turn perspectives. We haven't been working with perspective, <laughs> um, and that gives us a, a better idea. All right, let me see the chat now. Um, have a question. Every character like sci, every character like sci-fi creature, or realistic have different process. Yes. Um, did I miss the question? A different process of these, or like as in what I'm doing. Sorry, I'm not I, I'm not sure if I got the question. Um, maybe if you can phrase it differently. Alex, um, or maybe Alex is asking, it's answering. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. Uh, Felipe, what is the tool you use to make line on top of things? To paint it? Or to just sculpt the lines, these type of lines? Do you use edge polish for use of that stuff? Mostly really rely on the uh, dumb standard for trying to figure out general contrast of shapes. Um, oh, what? Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, got it. <laughs> so the this this little thing here is called Epic Pen. Yeah, it's uh, it's free. I I got um. You know, um, I, this is the one that I use with my students as well in in the classes. So I got the premium version, but the premium version is only like ten bucks or something, and it allows you to have this whiteboard thing, which is pretty cool. Um, so I use that sometimes to, you know, I go like that, and then I can explain things like if it's just a whiteboard. But other than that, you have all the rest of the all the tools in the in the free version. So yeah, uh, do you use H polish? That stuff mostly rely on the damn sand brush. So um, H H polish I would use if I wanna kind of like a hard surface. Um, in these, I mean, hard surface. Usually when people, you know, when refer to hard surface, they refer to like mecha type of thing. Uh, this to me is hard surface. It's just a, an organic thing. So I wouldn't rely or I wouldn't use the H polish necessarily because I would get like very flat planes. Uh, one thing you can do when you're sketching these type of things is also on top of adding groups is enable polish. So every time that you redyna mesh, Sirius is going to apply a clay polish. So if I do clay polish right now, it just sharpens all of those those details and, and that's pretty cool, but that's not what I want. Um, and because this is a more organic thing, what I'll do and we, oh, we have like five minutes. So I'll just show you the two things. So after this, sort of setting up those those lines in a way of defining these these areas. Um, I go with the clay brush, for example, and I will add some volumes, like for example, in this area. Let's actually do a dynamesh of everything. There we go. And yeah, with the clay brush, I start to add these sort of things and the, the smooth brush as well. So. This is just to start to integrate those lines a bit more with the with the rest, right? So, basically, adding volume and then merging it and, and diffusing that towards the inside, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, this is another process that takes me a while to just 
figure out where which ones I want to add volume to, which ones I want to push. Maybe these ones I want to use the Alt key to to accentuate this sort of like line at the top here. Then add volume here, and then sort of push things in even more. Um, so this is just not the normal the normal sculpting process, I suppose. That is just pushing and pulling things. Uh, but we have those lines that are indications of what we want to do. Um, so to polish things, instead of using the edge polish, because again, this is this feels more like an organic hard surface than anything, I wouldn't use the edge polish. I would use the um, uh, the trim dynamic. The trim dynamic is pretty cool. So for example, this area right here is still pretty sketchy, but I can bring in the trim dynamic. And the trim dynamic is going to do essentially the same thing, but it's going to be based on the, it's dynamically going to change the angle at which is polishing. So it's going to help me create a, a more randomness in a way, or more variation in, in the in those in those planes. Um, so that's pretty cool. But yeah, if you want to do more like a mecha thing and and, and rely more on like straight angles and all of that. Uh, there's a bunch of other things that you can do, like um, using the, the edge polish. Um, I'll give you a couple of things that can be done really cool with that edge polish as well. Uh, hopefully it doesn't crash. I touched the screen. No. Yeah. So once once you have something like that, maybe let's find another piece. This one right here. So if you want to refine this and create this very sharp lines, uh, obviously the edge polish would really help. Stone off edge um, RGB would really help to to sharpen this and create this very very nice edge, right? And I'll do one there and I'll do another one here. But you see that it sort of merges or not merges, but it is affecting both sides. So a cool trick about uh, of when when you're using this edge polish is to start polishing and then once you start polishing because as soon as you click it's kind of like establishing the plane that this edge polish is going to follow you can hold the control key and it's going to preserve even if i get closer to this line it's going to try to preserve that line or that that plane a lot more so now i can do the same thing on the top hold control after i click and it's going to try to preserve that line even more right so Definitely a really cool way to work with a hard surface. And if you want to keep this line a bit straight, again, if it is more like a mecha thing, uh, another thing you can do is bring in the pinch brush and enable lazy mouse and maybe more, more of a lazy radius, and then just pinch this border. I'm going to increase the intensity so it's obvious. So pinching that border like this, and also having the the lazy radius, it really helps to you know bring everything closer to each other. And again, this is a still a dynamic. So obviously we're distorting things quite a bit, pinching them, but we just need to redynamish and, and that's it. So that's how you can refine those things, I think, or one of the ways that at least you have to uh, that you can refine those. Uh, but let's go back quickly with this and we're going to wrap it up here guys because i gotta go now but hopefully this has been informative this is going to be the the last stream until uh january so i suppose um happy holidays merry christmas for those of you who celebrate christmas and happy new year um if you're part of my email list i uh, will send a couple of emails um, with some thoughts um, that I've, and some things that I prepared for the end of the year. And so, yeah, keep an eye on your email. And other than that, I think we are pretty much ready to, to wrap it up here. I'll do a, a quick work in progress render of this and share it online as well if you want to see the, you know, the before and after in a way. Uh, but I think, I think that's it for me today, guys. Hopefully do, you have enjoyed this this stream and don't forget to tune in tomorrow um the the pixology guys are going to be doing some uh, pretty awesome stuff and unveiling the the new 
uh, Sirush 20, 21.5, yeah, 0.5, I think it is. Um, and another thing, just be keep, keep an eye on the Sirush guides as well. I will show you, or I will post as soon as I finish with this stream, um, I will post the new guide that it sort of covers the the skin texturing in Sirius using polypaint. All right, so let's turn off polypaint. I'm, I've been using the polypaint just to, yeah, to have something like that. Um, let's do a quick render as well. All right, so a crack, Crab, um, not crab, a crab uh, samurai for for this holiday season. Um, so, yeah, Merry Christmas for those who celebrate Christmas, and I will see you next year. Have a good one, guys, and thanks for tuning in.